Huh? Time to pay some bills. Yo, oh, let's get everybody. We got a special video. We got what would happen after World War III. In case some of you, ladies and gentlemen, is living underneath the rock, we got Ukraine, we got Russia. They are getting tense, man. The other day, man, I went on TikTok. TikTok is almost like Call of Duty highlights right now. You seeing people like aircrafts getting shot down. Bro, I seen one dude, he had five dog tags. He was on a kill streak. Cause he had like five um you don't you know the pads that um the soldiers have on their uniform? You know, when when they you can just rip it off, you know, with their names? Bruh, he had five of those. And I'm sure the Russian soldiers just, just didn't hand it over to him. Some of them had a little blood on them. So you feel where I'm coming from, bro. It's real out there, y'all. That's all I'm trying to say, man. It's real out there, man. Prayers. Man, because uh, people's lives are being lost in this situation, bro. And more will continue to happen, bro. Man, this is so crazy. We're about to see this in our... Well, let's say we about to see this. Uh, the future. <laughs> You're going to be reading about this right here in uh, in the history books, man. Crazy, man. If anybody get drafted from the U.S., the first people I hope to be drafted is people who created young boy accounts. And, you know, who go on Twitter and be spamming... Fell off. I was right here on everybody tweets. I hope you guys be drafted first. Get to the video. This video is sponsored by Conflict of Nations, the free online strategy game where you'll bring the most modern technology to the battlefield. Take control of a real country to find out what it's like to lead it in a modern uh -oh, world. Oh, he, he, he paid bills. Stealth fighters and even new he paid bill, bill. So something people has happened as a country and military forces clash on land, in the air, and on the sea, and underneath it, in the most violent war to date. But what would actually happen after World War III? The probability of a third world war is negligible but not impossible. All three of these big military powers who have the capability to launch a global war all have too much to lose by doing so. But history is full of examples of small conflicts spiraling com- Man, all it takes one person to hit that, that nuclear bomb, bro. And it's a wrap for human existence. Completely out of control and beyond the plans of those who initiated them. To find out what the world would look like after World War III, we have to examine two different global wars, a conventional war and a nuclear war. One thing is for sure, the economic damage alone would reshape the face of the earth. Such a war would inevitably begin by a confrontation between U.S. and Chinese forces in the South or East China Sea. A Sino-U.S. war isn't likely to go global and would require multiple escalatory steps to get there. First, China would have to directly threaten or attack Japanese forces, something that is predisposed to do already because of the presence of multiple U.S. air bases in Japan. If China wanted to keep Japan out of the conflict, it would have to avoid striking these bases, which would have seriously detrimental effects on its ability to fight against the U.S. Next, a third party would have to be willing to exploit the situation to its own advantage. The most likely culprits here- Hey, my thing is, bro, we're like, it's, it's, almost, it's, it's just like chess, man. You know, how about y'all three president, four president, how about y'all just duke it out, bro? Why you putting us in here, man? Real talk, bro. You leading me to death? What? I understand the fan for what's mine and everything. But, bro, how come y'all just get y'all old asses out there and, and, and y'all duke it out? Man, you feel me? Oh, you feel you go from her. Here are India, Iran, and Russia. India would be tempted to act to push Chinese ground forces out of the contested northern border regions and perhaps even maneuver itself to throw China out of Tibet, thus threatening Chinese fresh water supplies and granting it massive leverage over its rival. This That's all unlikely tea, but man. not impossible as a sign of American just, listen, war would largely when they just fought throwing these missiles near the aircrafts going invading. Fight against Indian man, Iran, this Iran, however, is likely these. to exploit the diversion of Cause, U.S. Cause forces that big from the joke, region for that its own big old nuclear China would inevitably cause a drawdown. And you know, ain't no, ain't no one going down, bro, without that, bro. Why would I sit right here and let, let a missile just come and, and attack me? And I'm not about to press it, but bro, look, bro. You feel come from y'all? That's what it all come down to, bro. This got me paranoid, bro, but it, it's how I think, bro. You know, we just gonna keep on just knocking puns off, you know, just like chess, okay? You know, getting a little bit of your, your, your boards out the thing, the chess pieces out there until you be king of king. And guess what, man? Ain't nobody just going down like that, bro.
replacement of U.S. peacekeeping forces in other regions of the world. Currently, 60% of U.S. firepower is in the Pacific. But as losses rapidly mount, the U.S. will need to pull reinforcements from its multiple other global commands. With American forces no longer acting as police against bad actors, Iran could use the opportunity to attack Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states with its superior military. This would hugely disrupt global oil trade and have devastating financial repercussions across the world. Russia might seek to exploit U.S. preoccupation with China for its own gain in Europe. While Russia has no ambition to rule all of Europe, it could see a drawdown of U.S. forces in Europe as the opportunity to take by force breakaway Soviet republics and even some of its NATO neighbors such as Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. In a worst-case scenario, all three flashpoints are ignited due to American preoccupation with China, leaving the world dramatically different after the war. Such a war is almost certain to end with a U.S. victory over China, although an extremely costly and poorly defined victory. Immediately at war's end, the United States military would be severely depleted, going from the world's most powerful fighting force to a significantly weakened force that still has global reach but will take a decade or more to restore itself to its former glory. Dang, like it hurt, man. This is coming... Lives, American naval and air losses would be staggering, as with much of half of its air and naval fleets destroyed. Half of the U.S. aircraft carrier fleet would be sunk in a conflict with China, a loss of over $50 billion in ship costs alone, over 500 aircraft and over 12,000 seamen and aviators. The loss of all important American carriers alone would see the United States lose its ability to rapidly respond to global conflicts. This loss in capability would only be compounded by significant losses in the U.S. Air Force. Without the ability to rapidly and overwhelmingly respond to global crises, the immediate post-war <laughs> years would see the ignition of regional wars across Africa in the Middle least, critics of U.S. military presence around the world would rapidly see the cost of losing that peacekeeping force as simmering tensions suddenly explode in the absence of a threat of U.S. involvement. In the Middle East, Iran would seize the opportunity to attack its longtime rival Saudi Arabia. Despite being an oil-rich and wealthy nation, Saudi Arabia is handily outclassed militarily by Iran, as it has relied on the United States to keep Iran in check for decades. No other power is likely to prevent Sheesh. Iranian aggression in the Middle East, nor do they have the capability to do so. All Europe European powers, save for France, simply no longer have the expeditionary capabilities to respond to military conflicts around the world without U.S. support, and France lacks the assets needed to significantly counter Iranian aggression so far from its own shores. An oil-rich Iran would become a regional superpower, shaping the Middle Eastern policy to its own liking. This would inevitably lead to an explosion of extremism with waves of attacks against Europe. Hey, hey, can't, <laughs> bro, they are y'all wrong for this, man. To make the girl look thick, they put a big old round. <laughs> feel me? The guys got half a circle. They've been getting what about full circle. But look it up. AKA y'all, we go to war. Metal gas prices going up. And all they saying, y'all, you know, just translate. Some of you people don't know what's going on. Gas prices will be going up. They're cutting out the supply. Europe and African nations are pushing both continents into a dark age of terrorism. Elon Musk will get more rich. Saudi people Arabian gonna go wealth more electric cars, fields. bro. Iran could continue a campaign of conquest unchecked across the Middle East, forcing other neighboring nations into its fold and simply invading those that resisted. With its finger firmly on the oil tap to Europe, Iran would have great influence over European powers, likely leading to a necessary buildup of military forces in Europe and an inevitable invasion of the Middle East years later. A European Middle East war would be a world war in its own right with staggering casualties on all sides and economically ruinous for both regions. Middle East turmoil would only make the lives of those in China worse. In the aftermath of a war against the U.S., the Chinese Navy and Air Force would be obliterated, with only those forces left in reserve in western China against India or Russian incursions left intact. Chinese infrastructure, at least along its eastern Pacific border, would also suffer moderate damage due to American long-range air attacks, while China can do little to militarily threaten the U.S. homeland. Large-scale damage to Chinese port facilities would only exuberate the damage caused by years of American naval blockade. China relies on the Pacific for the majority of its trade, and most important. So we ain't gonna talk about the human lives that, that's, that's going down with these ships, right? These ships are just, just, just automatically just remote control, right? It's just out there just firing up over there, right? No, no one is in the ship doing that, huh? No one doing that, huh? No one backing that thing up. You know, no one doing that, huh? Stop, bro. People's lives are being lost, man. Some people going home without no mom and dad, man.
Importantly for the import of energy oh, resources, the despite heavy losses, the U.S. Navy could still undertake an effective blockade of Chinese trade, crippling the nation and resulting in a GDP loss of as much as 35%. China, in return, could threaten U.S. trade in the Pacific as well, but would be unable to directly threaten either the American West or East Coast, resulting in only an expected GDP loss of 10% for the U.S. But the disruption of trade in what's the world's most important trade superhighway would only result in the weakening of the East Asian economies and, to a smaller extent, the entire world. East Asian nations would be the hardest hit due to their dependence on Chinese goods. This will have a knock on. One second, y'all gotta charge this phone, man. I gotta go to the gym after this. I gotta make sure that phone will charge 6%. Yeah. <coughs> Back, my bad. Effect on European nations who import cheap goods manufactured in East Asia. The ensuing worldwide economic recession will lead to flare-ups in social unrest and widespread unemployment. This, combined with a worst-case scenario of Iranian aggression in the Middle East, could set the stage for revolutionary movements in some countries and the flare-up of partisan tensions spilling over into outright violence. Perhaps no nation would be as rocked, though, as China, who, despite inflicting incredible losses on the U.S. military, would still be facing a humiliating defeat, with a near total loss of its Navy and Air Force. American cyber warfare operations would work to steadily degrade the Chinese government's ability to censor information electronically throughout the nation. The Chinese government like a hot to censor information ah! throughout the nation, and increasing unrest and war weariness would embolden pro-democracy and separatist factions in China. While it's likely that the Chinese government would remain intact, this would represent a significant threat to the Chinese Communist Party, directly leading to even more violent crackdowns on an increasingly rebellious population. We've already seen this scenario in miniature thanks to the Hong Kong riots. And while China showed restraint in Hong Kong because of international pressure, it's unlikely to show restraint when faced with similar uprisings within the mainland when the survival of the CCP is threatened. The further disruption of the Chinese economy would have a domino effect on the rest of the world, especially those nations that rely on China for critical technology and imports. Global GDP would shrink significantly, leading to unemployment and unrest across the world. While the rest of the world is suffering, though, one nation might come out of a third world war smelling like roses. Russia has long suffered under a weakening economy, made worse by Whoa. European sanctions due to its aggression in Crimea. However, the loss of Chinese trade routes throughout the war and a need by China to replace its destroyed military military equipment would be a massive financial boon to the state. European powers might be even willing to lift sanctions against Russia and provide economic concessions or even political ones, such as allowing Russia to reabsorb former Soviet republics in exchange for the aid of the Russian military in fighting against Iranian aggression in the Middle East. A new global order after World War III would see Russia rising to a position of prominence it hasn't held since the days of the Soviet Union. But now let's look at a worst-case scenario, complete and total nuclear warfare that spans the face of the Earth. While a conventional World War III would still see the United States suffer the least militarily or economic harm, a nuclear war would almost completely level the playing field between China and the U.S., leaving both nations a ruined smoking wreck. What do you mean, worst case scenario? So I'm going to go out here and fight and I ain't about to use my best, my best weapon? And I, and, I, and I know <laughs> I'm going to die here? Stop, bro. That button getting pressed, bro. That button, that, I might step on the button, bro. Come on, bro. The U.S. still holds the advantage in number and sophistication of nuclear weapons. Thus, China would inevitably suffer far greater damage than the U.S. However, nearly every major U.S. city would suffer at least one nuclear strike, with most coming under fire from multiple wars. Oh, I ain't not going to Louisiana. I'm going to head all the way from California. I tell you, and that's, and I'll tell you right now, bro. If, if any nuclear bomb go anywhere, I don't care what, what city, whatever it is, y'all, I pray that not. I'm leaving California. I'm leaving LA. E, I'm telling you right now, I'm going back to my crib down there in Louisiana. I'm getting the hell out. Cause I know one of them things coming out there. It got to be. Got to be. Heads. Should Russia join the fray, it would inevitably Going back to the boot, man. NATO members, such as France and Great like, Britain, and spread. Why would you want to, you know, throw something in Louisiana? You know, like, let's do, like, Louisiana. I like got good food. You know, they can leave us alone. 
at thermonuclear warfare <laughs> we deal with our own shit already. seven continents. Previous fears of nuclear winter have since been proven to be overblown, but a global cooling effect will still take place, dropping global temperatures by a few degrees. A drop of just one degree centigrade in global temperatures would make Canadian wheat growing impossible, showing us just how vulnerable the global food supply really is. What farmland isn't rendered fallow by a drop in global temperatures would likely be unusable due to nuclear impacts. Both the US and Russia target each other's vast swaths of farmland as nuclear targets, with the express intent of starving uh, each other's, uh, each other's uh, uh, vast uh, uh, of farmland. Hey, let see that? We, we ain't got nothing here. Hey, where am I now? Tell you, man. California lit up, bro, like a Christmas tree. I'm out of here, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. As nuclear. Okay, that shut that airports, man. I'm getting a long Uber drive, man. Oh, I'm driving down there. Targets with the express intent of starving each other into submission in case of nuclear war. With the U.S. alone exporting much of the world's grain, it wouldn't just be the you Americans get, that starve. You better keep me on the, the first, well. on the first one, man. That with strikes against <laughs> Russia and Chinese <laughs> real, producing bro. regions, plus contamination from other nuclear strikes, and hundreds of millions would begin to starve within weeks. The initial casualties would Crazy. also be in the hundreds of millions, with hundreds of millions more falling prey to injuries and radiation sickness within days to weeks. Then, secondary effects of global nuclear war would lead to even more deaths as trade routes are disrupted, infrastructure is rendered inoperable, and diseases caused by high concentration of airborne debris strike down people by the millions. Many nations around the world would rely on imports to feed their populations, and the loss of global trade alone would doom tens of millions to immediate starvation. As massive plumes of choking dust and debris spread across countrysides in Australia, North America, Europe, and Asia, respiratory disease would claim millions more. Global firestorms would decimate wildlands as fires ignited by burning cities spread for hundreds of miles around, causing fires so fast that they'd be visible from space, if not for all the debris in the atmosphere. If one could peer through that thick haze of gray that would remain aloft for days or even weeks, they would see a planet in flames, with fires raging for weeks or even months and killing millions more. The world population would likely fall to below 1 billion within five years of global thermonuclear war. Within a decade of starvation, disease, and conflict for dwindling resources, humanity would be lucky to number in the 500 millions. However, there is good reason to think that humanity would not go extinct after all and could even bounce back in time. Most nuclear strikes are designed to maximize destruction. A ground burst of nuclear weapon severity limits its destructive range, as most of the energy in the explosion is sent down into the ground or absorbed by ground features such as buildings, hills, etc. Therefore, nuclear weapons are designed to explode over their target, greatly enhancing their lethality and avoiding ground clutter altogether. While this makes nuclear weapons more lethal, it has the positive side effect of sending more of the resulting radiation upwards and into space. Fears of a global irradiated wasteland might be overblown. And while it's certain that radioactive debris would be in harmful levels just about anywhere on Earth, humanity and the livestock and food crops it depends on could still survive in sufficient numbers to eventually bounce back. That's because the fissile material in a bomb is destroyed in milliseconds. Guarantee you, hey, I'll tell you right now, rats and roaches, especially the roaches, them boys gonna stay alive. The book gonna stay alive, man. The roaches, man. It, you, you can't take them out. Like, here you guys, like, like have some food in the microwave, man. You seen the roaches just chilling in there. He not even, he not even bothered by the micro microwave. <laughs> Man, crazy. Causing an intense burst of radioactivity that quickly falls off as atoms decay in a chain reaction. In several years, most radioactive fallout would turn into more stable elements, such as strontium-90. With its half-life of 29 years, strontium-90 and similar materials are still harmful, but not nearly as radioactive as materials with a half-life of hours, minutes, or even seconds. As Nagasaki and Hiroshima have proven, it doesn't take long for humanity to reclaim the ruins of cities struck by nuclear weapons. The real danger is in the sheer number of weapons employed in a global nuclear war, and thus the higher concentration of less dangerous but still harmful, longer-lived radioactive isotopes in the water and soil. Human lifespans will be shortened dramatically, and many species will go extinct due to climate change, natural ecosystems will collapse, and a staggering amount of pollution will be created by the incineration of hundreds of major cities. Even after all of that, within centuries, humanity should be well on the rebound. What shape the world would take, however, is completely unknown, though it's likely that none of the current major powers would continue to exist as cohesive 
cohesive states. In all likelihood, it would be Africa which would become the lotus of economic and military power, as it's least likely to be directly affected by nuclear war, and unlike the rest of the world, they'd still be able to feed most of their population, as many African states have agrarian-based economies. One thing is certain, the nations that launched World War III would- Man, I'm, listen, I don't care, they got a spirit flight ticket, man. We call it Spirit or Sprint, whatever it is. I'm gone. Africa, here yeah, I go, man. <laughs> Kumbaya, go over there, Africa, man. Would not be My people. More than dust and utterly inconsequential in the new era of human history to come. Thanks again to our sponsor, Conflict of Nations, okay. the free online PvP strategy game set in a modern global warfare. Get a special <sighs> gift of 13,000 gold. More paying bills, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. Um, man, prayers, man. Prayers to Ukraine, Ukraine, bro. Like everything that's going on with the wars, bro. I like peace, man. You know, I know I joke around a lot and everything about this situation, y'all, because, you know, it's the hot to pay. <laughs> Real talk, man. Y'all stay safe out there, man. Hopefully, we, we ain't got we ain't got experiences right here, man. And um, there'll be no nuclear war. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We out here. Everybody.